Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the Production Music Library Audio Network. This review is for composers and music producers who might be considering submitting music to Audio Network for inclusion in their catalogue and want to get the inside track from Audio Network themselves on how to have the best chance of submitting successfully. This is advice I got directly from them and it's not available on their website or anywhere else. So in this video, you'll learn more about how to submit music to them, if they're a good library to have your tracks with, and a bunch of other useful information based on my calls and communications with Audio Network directly. We'll also talk about their deal for composers and what kind of income you can expect from them as they go about trying to place your music with their clients who make all sorts of media that needs production music. All this coming up in this video. For great insider tips on writing production music for music libraries, TV, film and games, subscribe to the Music for Income channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a new video each week. As I'm starting to review production music libraries in videos like this one, it's even more important to subscribe and get notified so you can be ahead of the pack in getting your tracks to these folks. I'm Michael from Music for Income. I'm a professional TV composer and I also run a production music library. Now for those that don't know, production music libraries sign composers and music producers tracks and then get them placed on films, TV shows and elsewhere so that you can start earning royalties. Now, if this is all totally new to you, check out this video. I'll put a card link to it above where I'll walk you through everything you need to know to get started in this area. So today we're going to be talking about the Production Music Library Audio Network. Audio Network is the brainchild of Andrew Sunnox and Robert Hurst, two British guys who met when they both worked for music publisher Boosie and Hawks. They left to form Audio Network together in 2001, a music library that went on to massively shake up the production music industry in the UK at the time. It was one of the first subscription model music libraries and became very appealing to broadcasters and companies needing music. See, up until they started in the UK, if you wanted to use production music, nearly all music libraries would be members of the MCPS, an organization who would set the rates a client pays up front for library music. On top of that, it got really complex for clients after they used this production music on their shows. So Sunnox and Hurst realized this and decided to start a library where they wouldn't register Audio Network's tracks with the MCPS, therefore allowing themselves to set their own prices outside of the MCPS. They created an easier to understand subscription pricing model, which included a load of usages for the client already built in. Quickly, more and more clients, including entire broadcasters, moved over to solely using audio network music. Audio Network's model meant that they may have lost out on higher prices charged by being an MCPS member, but these guys were cleaning up on getting their music out there and therefore benefiting from considerable performance royalties. The model worked, the company saw explosive growth. They now operate directly in the US, UK, France, Germany, Japan, and a bunch of other territories too. Audio Network have a ton of music across a huge array of genres. One of the things that I find interesting about the way they lay their music out is they're not too bothered about it being album led. They zone in on musical styles, mood, instrumentation, and production genres. All the things that 
as an editor wanting to put music on a production, you'd most likely be wanting to search by. Now, Audio Network have also invested a huge amount of money over the years into their catalogue. In fact, at the start of things, they even made certain writers shareholders, massively incentivizing those composers to focus on writing music for them. You know, a friend of mine used to work at Abbey Road Studios in London, where of course the Beatles recorded and where a large amount of film and TV scores have their recording sessions too. And I remember him saying to me at one point, that Audio Network booked more sessions at Abbey Road when he was there than any other client seemed to do. Now, yes, this may be in some part a savvy move to keep their company tax bill down, but as a composer, it's hard not to love a music library so passionate about getting real musicians onto their tracks to keep the quality as high as possible. So if you write music that calls out for live musicians from, I don't know, just a couple of players through to full orchestral sessions, Audio Network may be a real contender for you to have those visions for your music realized. At the time of recording this video, Audio Network have over 200,000 tracks. And before I start sounding like a total Audio Network fanboy with this review, uh, this might actually be one of their downsides if you are a composer. It's hard to find a genre that isn't not just taken on Audio Network's website, but not borderline oversubscribed with tracks you're really going to have to find an angle musically or conceptually to find your niche here. But I'll show you later in this video how you can get around that in general, as it's a challenge you'll often find when looking to write music for bigger music libraries. If you have any thoughts about when is a music library too big when considering submitting to music libraries, leave your thoughts in the comments below. There's no right or wrong, of course, but it's really interesting for us all as composers to see each other's thoughts on this. Now, in terms of growth, I spoke to Billy in Audio Network's New York office, and he said to me that he estimates that they add between 15 to 20 albums per month to their catalog. So it's growing the whole time. And you could argue that this is encouraging in terms of them being open to new music. Have they had some good placements? A very short answer is yes, they have good placements continually. A few, for the sake of example, there's a ton of movie trailers that they've had their music in, such as those for Deadpool, Zootopia, Her, and Cafe Society, as well as music constantly being used across advertising, documentaries, and reality TV shows. Plus, they've had a load of corporate clients such as Mercedes-Benz. Here is what Joel, one of the music researchers at Audio Network's London office, told me when I asked him about what kind of deal they offer composers whose music they like. Joel says, We are very proud of the collaborative partnership that we've developed over the years with our composers and artists. This comes with a transparent approach to returning as much value as we possibly can for the music that is assigned to us. Our current contract is consistent for all composers with the same remuneration terms and is shared upfront as part of initial commissioning discussions. Performance royalties are shared in the standard way with composers retaining the full writer's share. For other revenue types, including sync, we have an attractive model which is specific to the usage type and how our licensing model varies ac across customer segments. For example, one-off licensing versus subscriptions. This is the kind of detail we would go into one-on-one -on -one with any prospective composer. We also pay an on-delivery fee 
for assignment of copyright as well as covering all third-party production costs associated with realizing the music with no recoupment. That's including everything from a small drum session to recording a full orchestra at Abbey Road Studios. So how do you submit music to these guys? The good news is that Audio Network do accept submissions from new composers. So in this section, I'm going to tell you all about how to stand the highest chance of getting your music accepted by Audio Network. The advice on this matter is straight from them. And this isn't advice that they share on their website. This is from me getting in touch and asking on your behalf. So I really hope that you use this advice to get ahead of the game. I always try to get this information for you guys in these reviews. So once again, if you haven't already, pause the video now and subscribe to the Music for Income channel and hit the notification bell so that you can stay ahead of the game on insider info on which libraries to get your music licensed through. So submitting to Audio Network. First things first, the Audio Network submissions page is at the link I'm putting up on the screen now. And there, there is a link to their submissions form. Important points to note here is that they want your sure to impress playlist, which is the best example of what you can do. They prefer the disco or SoundCloud platforms to hear your music and require the URL for that, oh, of course. Now, Billy from their New York office says to keep in mind that in terms of usage, branded and TV content is mostly what they do. And your real key is to try to give them the ability to offer something to their clients that they don't already have. So try to have an interesting angle. Back to Joel at their UK office, and he gave me some really comprehensive advice that I wanna share with you. Joel says, primarily we are looking for music that is going to add value to the catalog through a combination of one, great writing and arranging, two, an intrinsic understanding for the end use, three, the highest quality production that we also support. Four, an exciting or new approach that inspires us as a creative team. And five, perhaps most importantly, fulfilling a key genre or stylistic priority based on our understanding of our customer need, but in a brilliant way. Because of the work we do, in recording at the best studios around the world with the finest musicians, we seek out writers, artists, and producers who are comfortable, skilled, and passionate to work in that way with us. We also provide significant investment and creative support in achieving our final recordings depending on the specific needs of the genre. Our overall commissioning choices are governed by our catalogue strategy, especially our priorities for commissioning plus release rate slash catalogue growth objectives, which we've developed based on a deep understanding of how our music gets used, what our customers are asking for, and of course, our passion for the music we want to make. We are also focused on building a catalogue and roster that supports diversity in all forms and represents the cultures of music we make. We favour quality and relevancy over quantity, but are also proud of our ability to maintain a significant monthly album release rate and overall catalogue growth that fuels our customer demand. New composers and artists either come via our a &R network direct to our music team or through unsolicited submissions to the website, which is the appropriate place to submit if you do not have a pre-existing relationship with us. 
So, if you're thinking of submitting your music to a library such as Audio Network, you only get one chance to make a good impression. And I want to tell you about a free resource that can help you instantly improve your music and make it more production music friendly and work exceptionally well to picture. As a professional TV composer, as well as someone who has co-owned a music library for years, I've seen the common mistakes that composers make over and over again when submitting to libraries. And I'll tell you this, the reasons tracks get turned down is not always all obvious stuff like straight up poor quality music. We've heard some amazing submissions at our music library over the years, but many of those tracks are just not right for production music. There's a difference, you see, and music libraries aren't gonna give you feedback on your track submissions. They're just too busy to do that. So I decided to put together a load of advice to tell you these largely undiscussed pitfalls. And I also interviewed award-winning TV editors. Now, those are the clients who select which library tracks they're going to actually put on the shows. And I spoke to them about what they look for in a track. Plus, I interviewed music library executives themselves about which common mistakes composers should avoid when submitting. And on top of that, I interviewed a few six figure a year library music composers who actually use quite rigid formulas regardless of what kind of style they're writing in. I also share how to find angles when submitting to libraries that already have a huge amount of music, a challenge I mentioned you might have with companies such as Audio Network. So I want to give you three free lessons from all of this research. The link to this is in the description below. I guarantee you that you'll find some stuff in there from these experts that is really eye-opening and that you can use instantly to make your tracks better and it's free just click on that link and grab your free lessons so I really hope that you found this review useful let me know your thoughts in the comments below if there's anything that you'd want covered differently or if that you have a music library that you'd like me to look into for you for a review also, check out the other videos on the Music for Income channel and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notifications bell to get notified of further videos. And of course, share this video with your composer and music producer friends, of course. Looking forward to catching you next time.